Good morning, uh, everybody. Happy Sunday. Um, another question here um, from uh, Rifa Burton. And Ms. Burton, if I mispronounce your first name, I apologize. Um, th her her question, and it's a good one. This is this is an important important one. Where is the state going to get twenty two million six hundred and seventy three thousand nine hundred and thirty four dollars, and then parentheses? That's twenty two million dollars for Springfield when the state right now is $400 million in the red. So, so what's key is to try to break this out and to talk about, well, okay, so where is what we're talking about in, our, in this budget proposal is the FY21 budget. So FY21 for everybody, um, and it was confusing for me when I first started this stuff. So FY21 for us in the school budget year means July 1, coming right up, July 1, 2020 through June 30, um, 21. So for that upcoming year, um, the state is dealing with a whole bunch of potential uh, revenue shortages because of different types of taxation not coming in. And because people were stay at home, uh, businesses were not open. Um, and so all, some of the money that they would normally collect, a chunk, good chunk of money they would normally collect, it wasn't coming in. So, um, so here's what's going on. It's an interesting conversation at the state level. It's a good reason why all of us in the community need to keep a careful eye on what are the dialogues that are happening at the in state government uh, and what are our representatives, um, whether it is our two house reps, um, um, Christy Morris and uh, Alice Emmons um, and uh, Tom Bach, for some of you who are in North Springfield and our um, Windsor County uh, senators, what are they doing in the state house and how does it affect us? Because a lot of times that gets lost. So right now, there is a hole in the Ed Fund. Now, we receive our money. So state government has a whole bunch of different money they draw from. But schools, the thing and the money that directly affects us in terms of tax rates um, is the state Ed Fund, uh, which is fed through certain distinct revenue streams. One is the educational residential tax rate and then the non-residential um, non educational tax rate. Uh, but also sales and use tax has a big part in that. There's other taxes that go into this pot that pay for the schools in the state of Vermont. So Ms. Burton's question is, well, hey, state's in the red, buddy. Um, so I don't know where this 22 million is coming from. Here, as of the last information that I got most recently um, from a combination of people in the Joint Fiscal Office, the Joint Fiscal Office is... Um, the Joint Fiscal Office is a nonpartisan, so they don't work for either political party, um, piece of federal government that works for the legislature, whose job it is to try to price out any proposals they come up with. So if they come up with some plan, I want to um, I want to cut in half the cost of all fishing licenses in the state of Vermont. The Joint Fiscal Office would say, well, if you do that, this is what it's going to cost. It's going to be this much less fees coming in, and you use those fees to pay for game wardens and fish and wildlife. And so you would have to make up this much money for those fees. Now the school stuff is super complicated because the, the state system is very complicated. Um, it is The Vermont state funding system is way more complicated than just about every state in the country, except maybe Hawaii, who has a statewide, um, statewide system. Uh, and, it's, and it is that way because it is designed to help communities like ours, who have a hard time raising um, raising funds. So, um, so here's what's here's um, so so what's tough is it be makes it really murky sometimes what's going on because it's so detailed and takes so much time to to read through stuff and to understand how all these pieces move together. Um, but simultaneously, it's the thing that helps us the most in terms of making this um, making the cost of what we're doing way reduced from what other communities might pay. And there'll come a time when Springfield, when we're in a different economic position, where we'll end up paying for other people more. But right now, we're in a position where people are paying for us. Um, so to go back to Ms. Burton's question, there is right now, in terms of the money that will come in for the 2021 20, school year, FY21, uh, there is a hole um, that at one point people thought it was like $160 million. Um, uh, at this point, they think, as the numbers are getting better, than what they projected, that, that that amount may be down from 100 and almost $70 million of a hole in the Ed Fund 
down to about a million, uh, 106. Now that 106, the state house has been trying to figure out what to, um, what to do. And the first group that gets a crack at that is the House Ways and Means Committee. So in the House of Representatives in the state of Vermont, House Ways and Means sets the tax, the initial conversation for taxation. And they, excuse me, they have already passed something that says, we do not feel that as a result of COVID, that the, the, that this additional revenue we would need to raise because most everybody else in the state has already passed their budget. There's a few of us who don't have past budgets and almost everybody's given out contracts to teachers and stuff at this point. So there's very little people could do to roll back the 90% of communities in the state who have already passed their budgets. And with contracts already out, you really can't, you're, you can't just say, well, I can't pay a contract anymore, even though we have a written contract with you staff member to do this. So there's not a ton that people can do and they don't want to jack, at least the house does not want to jack rates on everybody all over the state in order to cover the gap. So they put forward their proposal around taxation is to maintain um, what, what the um, ta kind of base taxation rates, the yield, um, things called the yield, a little complicated, we can talk about more another time, but they want to basically keep the rates at where they were if COVID didn't happen and pursue the federal money that is available through the stimulus package through, through something called the CRF, uh, Corona Relief Fund, to offset the hole in the Ed Fund. So that basically we're in a, a pre-COVID, when people, most people in the state voted, it was a pre-COVID environment. And so that that would be what, um, what we would end up with. Now, the House is not the only people who get the way in on this, of course. Um, you know, ultimately, the Senate has to look at this as well and then make a decision. The House has forwarded this to the Senate. The Senate is having conversations about it right now. Um, and you got the governor floating around in here too, who's going to weigh in in one form or another um, about this. Um, and he could ultimately veto any package as well. So, so it's a great question because it's not as bad as 400 million in the hole in terms of what's happening on the educational side. Um, but it is still down from the height of the projections of 160 million in the hole. It is 106, I think is the best estimate at the moment. Um, and um, it is not totally clear yet what the outcome of that conversation will be, but it will affect everyone in the state equally if it comes down. The first, and again, the first group to weigh in on this, and it's a pretty powerful statement, is from, is from the House of Representatives in Vermont, and they have put forward already things should be based on pre-COVID revenue streams and that they're going to use other ways to backfill the, um, backfill the stuff. That does create a certain amount of risk. So, um, so I think it's an important question that Ms. Burton's asking. It does create a certain amount of risk that, some, that they might come to some other conclusions. Uh, and um, and it, it creates a certain amount of variability. So I appreciate all that. And I want to acknowledge that when we put forward our stuff and we talk about a 2.2 cent increase on the one third of homeowners in the community who um, would be impacted by our budget, we are assuming the same thing the House of Representatives is assuming. So you could look at that and say, way too rosy a prediction. You know, there's too, there's too many other variables. Um, but that's what, we, that's what we built it on because that's what we're getting from state government at this point. So great question. A lot more to that, but it's a, it's a great question and something definitely for people to consider.